Hello everyone, today's review is kind of a special one for me, mainly because the first time that I ever read through the entire Bible was in a chronological Bible. So this is a format that I very much enjoy and have had great benefit from using. So this is the Thomas Nelson New King James Chronological Study Bible. This one is in the black leather soft, so here's the box. Have your subtitle, Explore God's Word in Chronological Order. Then you have your list of features on the back. There's a lot of stuff in here. So you have different snippets on different parts of everyday life. You have different periods of time, which we'll talk about later, and then all your different features. And this one does retail for $79.99, so you can get it for for probably 20 15 20 dollars cheaper on other places so here's the bible itself this is the black leather soft you have four raised hubs which have gold lines on top and bottom you have chronological study bible horizontally on the spine i'm not particularly fond of that layout on there but it doesn't look bad it's very simple so it's not distracting, but I do prefer having it sideways. If you're New King James logo at the bottom and Thomas Nelson, it is perimeter stitched and there is an extra stitch line along the back here, but it does not have two pieces of material. It's all one piece. They just have an extra stitch line. And then you have perimeter stitching all the way around. And then you do have your ISBN stamped on the back. And there's one double-sided satin, 3 8 inch ribbon. It is, a chrono it is a chronological Bible, so most likely you won't be needing more than one ribbon if you're just reading straight through like it's intended. So that's sufficient. I, would, I do wish it was in the middle, not on the edge, but it is what it is. You have red head and tail bands, and then gold page gilding, but no art gilding. So opening up, it is paste down liner. There is reinforcement tape so it should should last and obviously you're not going to be using this most likely not using this extensively so you're not going to be beating it up like you would a Bible that you take to church every day. You have your presentation page that doubles as your end almost doubles as your end sheet. They did have an extra one on this one and then you get right into your Bible paper. So they kind of have two presentation pages. You have one here on the cardstock and then one on the Bible paper. Have a little bit of different information slots there. You can see here just the overall aesthetic to this Bible. It's very old-fashioned and I guess you'd say historical because that's kind of what the theme is, is the chronological portrayal of biblical events. So you kind of have an old-fashioned um, textured art and parchment style design. If your chronological study Bible opening, have your presentation opening page and then your copyright info. Now you'll notice that this is a 2008 copyright date. However, this is a 2021 printing. So You'll see at the end that this is a 2K Denmark comfort print type setting, but it does not say that on the on this page here. But it does say it at the end with your note regarding the type. So here is your table of contents. So this kind of outlines everything in here. I'm probably going to miss some stuff going through this whole thing, but I'm going to get as much as I can and as much as I remember. So you have your opening information and then you have your outline of the Bible itself. You have eight epochs of time or epochs depending on how you want to pronounce that. And each of those covers a different period of time frame. There are dates which describe which time frame that is referring to and those basically cover the different periods of biblical history. So you have the Exodus, the rise of Israel as a nation, and then later on you're coming of Messiah and then the age of the church. So that's kind of how the whole thing is designed and laid out. And I will 
kind of give the disclaimer that I would have about this Bible, and that is the choice of how it's laid out. And with any chronological Bible, you're going to have some variance between different people, and you're probably not going to agree with every choice that was made in this Bible for where things are put in the timeline. And also, we'll get to that in a moment, but just the chronology and the actual dates of things could be problematic for some people depending on your view of creation. So just keep in mind that this Bible won't always match up with what you believe to be the timeline of Scripture. But that's not an issue if you were just using it as it was intended as a guide just to kind of put things in a more ordered way in the time frame of where they might have actually occurred. So here are a couple pages that describe some of the different features. You have time charts. Here's an example of what those look like. You have time panels. Here's an example of what those look like. These time panels are kind of a focused period of history or an event. And then the time charts are a little bit more broad and they kind of cover sometimes multiple subjects. This one is demonstrating the one about Rehoboam and Jeroboam and the divided kingdom. So that kind of has two separate little information charts on those two kings. Then you have maps and then your list of contributors and your introduction, which I would encourage everyone to read because this does go through the different features here as well as how to read the Bible as history and then specifically this is the important one this kind of discusses how they organize scripture and it gives some um, warnings about just the subjectivity of some of that kind of what I mentioned before so they acknowledge that you will probably not agree with everything that they've chosen to do but that's okay if you are not taking it completely as at face value. It's it's an opinion to some extent. Then you have your New King James Version preface. And then we get into Epoch 1. So this will kind of cover, there's an introduction to each epoch, and it will cover the main events and the things that happened during that time frame. Here you'll see initially where the dating could be troublesome for some people. This one does basically starts creation at 2000 BC, but it ad it admits that there could be later than that, so it will go past 10,000 10, pretty much is the, the largest date mentioned here, but then there is a couple instances where it will um, reference older time periods, so just keep that in mind that it, it kind of gives a nod toward old earth in some places. Then you have your, these are historical overviews, and they're not in very many places. There are only so many in this whole Bible, but they will cover basically the general information regarding that particular time frame. And then there are book, there are transition commentary, and these basically kind of guide you as you're reading along, so you get this one's right before Genesis 1. It kind of explains the book of Genesis and what happens there. And then there'll be other ones throughout that just basically link different areas of the passage and how they relate, what's going to happen, what just happened, and kind of refocuses you on where you're at. I think there's everything in the front first couple pages, so we'll kind of try to hit them all. So these are a called the background notes and these kind of discuss main themes so most of what you'll see in here is background notes there's a lot of them and they have a lot of information so the bulk of the information side of it is going to come from these type of notes and they usually have a book reference and chapter reference in there as well these are your daily life capsules and they cover great ranges of different things they have politics, food, farming, agriculture, daily life, all kinds of stuff, religion. And they're just little blurbs on usually something related to this portion of the text. I do like that. They will keep all that focused on the text at hand, not just randomly. 
and then you do have time capsules and these are the so this, this one here you can see it goes back up to 26,000 years um, and these focus on events outside of the biblical extra biblical events and how they basically what's going on outside of this story in the Bible that you're reading so that kind of places the biblical text in the broader framework of history in general you have more background notes here's another transition here and the one thing they do here's another here's one of the maps and so they have also not just books are rearranged but sometimes chapters will be a rearranged so you might notice that there's a chapter somewhere that's just one chapter from another book that's actually in a regular Bible wouldn't be there. So they've organized as close as possible every piece of the Bible in chronological order. So here, this one is one of your time panels, I believe. So it just has the millenniums, just one topic. And you have your second epoch, another historical overview, and this just keeps going on and you have some pictures it is extremely vibrant and that's one thing I noticed it's extremely colorful throughout the entire thing even with that kind of toned brown scheme of the page and your layout for the top each epoch is color-coded and then you have the time period that that epoch covers your page number and then your information on what verses are covered so this one starts with Deuteronomy 31 1 on the top of the page here and then ends with 31 24 down here same thing for each page it tells you when it starts and when it ends and that goes for every page of the scripture it is not line matched obviously because there's so much extra charts and maps and stuff that you can't actually line match it I don't think is what's going on there but the opacity on this paper, I'm not sure the GSM, but the opacity is fantastic, even on pages that have full color. So here you have a full color photo on this side. You can barely see it on the back. Reading is not a problem. They did a really good job with that. And getting to the end, so that's pretty much what's gonna happen all the way through. Here's another time panel. I'll try to find We'll just kind of keep flipping through here. The Psalms obviously are verse by verse. Everything else is paragraph format. The paragraph or the columns are divided by a line. Then you have your textual footnotes at the bottom. There are no cross references. And here you have some longer transition periods. So obviously Daniel, it's more information going on there. So more to help explain what's happening. They just did a really good job on this one with the color and the, the theme of being kind of old. And I really like how they did that. So New Testament, words of Christ are in black. It's a black letter. They have some very good photos in here. So here's one of, I think this is a time panel, no time chart. I get confused on which ones are which because they don't really have a good indicator. That's the other thing. I wish they would have noted somewhere on here that it was a time panel or a time chart. It really doesn't matter once you get reading through it because you're not going to be looking for that specifically probably. But um, they have like the transitions are labeled and um, the historical overviews are not labeled and the background notes are not labeled. So it's kind of alternates between which ones are labeled, but it's hard to tell sometimes which one's a time chart and which one's a panel, but they all have chronological information. So getting to the end, you have your cultural and historical topics. So this will point you to the background notes and what they cover. So if you're looking for a specific topic, you can go here and look those up and look up those pieces of information that are written out in the background notes throughout the text. And there are quite a few of those. And then after that, you have a glossary. Very well done. 
It's not super long, but it is sufficient. And then you have probably the largest concordance of any Bibles that I've reviewed recently. It's about 195, I think it's 195 pages, last time I counted. And it is a concordance and index. So you have a lot of information in here. I won't bother stopping to explain because it's pretty self-explanatory. But you do have a lot of information in that concordance. And it is helpful in a Bible like this because looking things up is not as easy and this is where this next section comes in because the chronology is not going to match up with your traditional layout of the Bible. So looking up passages is pretty much impossible without this. And this is your index of scripture passages. And so this one is organized as our traditional layout would be. And it does not go by individual verses. So it's more by chapter groupings. So Genesis 1 through Genesis 4 is just that grouping and it has the pages that it's on so if you're looking for something in Genesis 3 you'll just have to go to pages 3 through 7 and you'll be able to find it but this will be basically your best friend if you're trying to look up a passage in this Bible otherwise you're, it's going to take you a long time to find it unless you know exactly chronolog chronologically where it is and then you have daily reading plans and these trace each epoch and go through a one or two year reading plan and they cover everything so they'll just and they kind of have a little bit of information on what that subject is for each day's reading and they have a page for each one so it's really easy you could use this and mark it off as you go there's a lot of room on here to do something like that they left a lot of space for creativity then at the end you have your illustration and photo credits and then a couple pages of lined paper red lines very bright kind of the modeled perimeters then your note regarding the type which does indicate that this is the 2k denmark type setting so this is the comfort print and it is 9.5 kind of forgot to mention that and then you have maps at the end Typical Thomas Nelson maps, not bad. They're not super thick cardstock, so they they bend nicely and fit well with the Bible. So this Bible, as far as size goes, is nine and an eighth inches tall by six and a half inches wide by around one and five eighths inches thick. So it's on your large end of Bibles, but it's not huge. It's not like a big study Bible, but it is a study Bible. So that's pretty much all I got on here. I probably missed something, but I think I got most of the information on here. There's a lot of stuff in this Bible. They did a great job with the layout and the design, having the comfort print, especially the New King James, an excellent reading experience for that. Your book um, chapter numbers are in red and you kind of have red accents throughout and overall it was just really well done obviously there can be some disagreement on the arrangement of everything but as long as you understand that going into it and expect that there might be some things that you disagree with on that and the timing of stuff it's going to be a very great way to engage with scripture and just give you a new perspective on the events in the bible so that is my not so concise review of the chronological study bible from thomas nelson